So the case is the U.S. federal government should cease all foreign aid and assistance to the state of Israel by normal ways and means over five years, um, half taken out, and the rest comes out over the course of five years. Um, our four main arguments is it's going to bring the Prime Minister Netanyahu to the table. It's going to decrease harm to Palestinians. It's going to set a precedence, set a precedent, precedence for self-sustaining um, for Israel, and it forces other countries to take away any foreign aid they also give to Israel. Um, so currently, in the state of Israel, um, there was a, uh, they've been building illegal settlements. Um, there's an agreement they're not supposed to be building any new settlements. However, not in Yahoo, uh, and then Yahoo is still building settlements outside of the agreement. And the UN has since denounced the settlements. Um, so Netanyahu is specifically, specifically going against the UN and the UN decision. It's harming the Palestinians. Um, uh, uh, because over, from 2000 to 2015, 6,815 6, Palestinians have died in the conflict compared to Israel, Israel, Israel 75, um, and the conflict has been going on to, for 15 years, so it's harming Palestinians more than it's harming. 2000 to 2014, sorry, 2000 to 2014, sorry. Um, uh, and it's been going on for over 50 years, so there's obviously more harm to Palestinians than there are to Israelites. 18.5% um, of Israel's defense budget comes from the U.S. and the U.S. budget. We give them $33 million, billion dollars in military aid and $5 billion for missile programs directly. Um, there's, uh, there's no agreement between uh, Palestine and Israel because of the illegal settlement that Netanyahu is making. So by taking away money, we're forcing Netanyahu to come to the table and forcing him to make an agreement with Palestine over how they're going to cease the conflict. Um, and it forces his hand. It says, sets a precedent for self-sustaining because they are an independent nation. And right now, a large portion of their military budget is coming from the U.S., and they're not sustaining themselves. Uh, they're getting a large amount of funding from the U.S., so we want them to please. Where are we? Uh, like, do, do you have like an advantage number? Uh, we're on number two. Okay, thank you. Okay, 18.5 of Israel's defense uh, budget comes from the U.S. Um, it, it also forces other countries to take away aid because of setting the precedent of the U.S. taking away aid. We're forcing other countries uh, to follow the U.S.'s lead and also take away aid. Um, um, it's harming Palestinians because they're uh, building settlements and outside of the boundaries that they're supposed to be building, which is causing further um, military conflict and military engagement. Um, and the Palestinians are the ones dying, not the Israeli citizens. As much um, as we said, it's 6,815 Palestinians versus Israel 75 over the period of 2000 to 2014. Um, and this conflict has been ongoing for 50 years, so obviously the current um, strategy for giving uh, military aid to Israel is not helping the, or helping the conflict cease. Um, Um, Israel is going to benefit from us taking away aid because it's going to force them to be a self-sustaining government and, self, uh, and a sovereign nation and no longer uh, be reliant on U.S. military aid and U.S. military funding, um, which is better for them long term.
Um, we all want to emphasize our plan for taking away the money. So half of it is being taken now, so it forces money off his hand and it takes away half of their um, half of the money we give them. However, we're phasing it over five years, so it doesn't cause a complete crisis in the region, um, and it doesn't for. Uh, and although it does force negotiations and forces uh, Israel to become self-sustaining to become their own sovereign nation, it also doesn't cause a crisis in their budget and cause them to class lots economically. It also benefits the U.S. government because we spend more than any other country on uh, on foreign aid and on the yeah on foreign aid and uh, than any other country in the world. Uh, um, and like the and the U.S. supports that the U.S. supports. We see a piece of this right time. Please vote. Ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, first off, how's everybody doing today? Good, good. Cool. Um, All right. Well, I'm going to start out with a little road map here, and then I'll start my time after that. I'm going to start by going off or on case by hitting their um, advantages, and then I'm going to go off case by touching on my two disadvantages. So um, thank you. Let me start my timer. Okay, so their plan was that uh, fate, we're going to phase out um, uh, all of our foreign assistance to uh, the state of Israel over, the, over five years. And I'm going to tell you uh, that directly right now that won't work, um, simply because uh, you know that leads me to my disadvantage one, which is regional destabilization. Uh, the uniqueness of that is the nation of Israel acts as a stabilizing force in the Middle East. Um, this region is currently very shaky. Uh, some, some countries like Syria are are in open civil war. Other countries like Turkey and Afghan or Afghanistan are on a tipping point. Um, our link is that the plan passes, and once again, sorry for switching over to the uh, off case. But um, our link is that the plan passes. Israel loses the primary source of support and aid. Um, our internal link is that uh, this decreases Israel's hard power, causing a power vacuum to take the place in the region. Um, Iran will attack Israel, perceiving them as weak. We can't just take away their power or just you know, not more so not fund them, uh, you know, any more assistance because this will lead to heavy war in that area. Uh, Iran will attack Israel, perceiving them as weak, as I said, and our impact to our disadvantage one is that Israel uh, will nuke Iran. Um, you know, can, uh, this is a conservative estimate, is that 10% uh, of destruction population by this nuke will kill 8.2 million at least, but could be up to 41 million in the long run due to radiation and everything that comes along with nuclear warfare. Our impact too is uh, power wars. Um, all countries in that region will end up wanting to go to war with each other, which will end up with you know just more murder, more killing, less life. Moving on to our disadvantage two, that's going, we're going to call that one disaster relief. Um, our current, the uniqueness is that Israel provides a, a humanitarian and disaster aid to the region. Our uh, second uniqueness point is that you know our main mechanism to providing aid is uh, the USA. Uh, and if we take that away, they're going to have nothing. They're going to have no aid and. Uh, most equipment needs to be replaced and is currently being negotiated by the Trump administration. Our link is that plan passes. Uh, Israel receives no equipment from the USA, basically sucking all of their power away from them. Our internal link is that Israel no uh, longer is able to provide disaster relief, such as relief provided to Fiji, the Philippines, South Sudan, uh, Taiwan, Nepal, and Guatemala. And that is just to name a few in the past 12 months. <clears throat> Our impact one, uh, more people are going to die. Uh, we, we saw this in Haiti, where, uh, you know, 
currently uh, the, you know, our world ability to help others is thin. We saw this with uh, the earthquake that happened not too long ago. Um, another thing is we uh, will be losing anything really in direct result to this. Um, our second disease, or our second uh, impact to that is going to be disease vectors. Um, Israeli planes are used to fight against mosquito-borne illness. Uh, this, so nuclear warfare would be bad, but this would be just as worse, e uh, if not even more worse, because uh, you know mosquito-borne illness is one of the biggest problems today. And if we just stop funding and you know take away these planes that are going to kill off mosquitoes and help with that uh, mosquito-borne illness, what's going to be left? I mean, we're going to see people dropping like flies now, you know, because of a mosquito and stuff of that matter. Now, all of these problems are systemic. All these impacts are systemic, and uh, it's not a matter of if it happens, it's a matter of when it happens. Um, now, I should probably, uh, I'm going to get back to their um, advantages. Uh, by <clears throat> So, going back to phasing it over five years, um, and taking away the aid over five years, like I said, because of all of my advantages, that's simply not going to work. It's going to lead to warfare, nuclear warfare at that, and deaths by mosquitoes, and sooner or later, uh, everybody in that region is almost going to be wiped out. Um, So going to their argument about the illegal settlements being made uh, between the countries is that, you know, yeah, it may be illegal, but it is saving, it is saving the lives of many people. And, uh, you know, we, we, don't, we don't really have the, the you know, the, the space to just be playing with people's lives. Sometimes you have to do what you got to do in order to survive. And this is not only uh, keeping us alive, well, you know, Israelis, and Palestinians for that matter, but this is keeping that region out of nuclear warfare. Um, you know, basically, we could see that population facing extinction if, if, uh, if you know, it, it gets to that. And they went on to say that uh, Israel will benefit because they will soon be able to self-sustain. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that that is not true. There's no way they will be able to self-sustain because we will be taking everything from them. They really don't have much, even if it's over a five-year period, um, that's not enough time. That's not enough time to just become a self-sustaining nation. Uh, it took the USA years and years and years. You know, it's not just something you could flip a switch and magically, uh, you know, hey, I'm self-sustaining. So. Um, yeah, and this, by them saying this forces other countries to take away aid, not necessarily. And, and plus, even if we did do that, that would lead to a crisis for, um, you know, this would lead to a crisis for, for uh, you know, weapons, even, even money, food, everything, and this would lead to a world war. So, um, thank you. That'll be all.
Um, uh, you were also mentioned disaster relief. Um, you said the main mechanisms for providing um, aid would be uh, lost, um, but we, the NGO still exists, and many NGOs um, do uh, provide uh, assist, do provide assistance for Palestine and Israel, and the U.S. indirectly funds uh, and. Uh, Many U.S. citizens fund these programs, not the U.S. government, and therefore the um, Israel is not receiving. It's not like Israel and Palestine are receiving no relief. It's not like they're receiving. Or Israel specifically is not receiving any relief. They're receiving relief through different ways and means. Um, and most of, the, and I would like to point out that most of the aid that we give them is military aid. There is hardly a, a the disaster relief here we might be referring to in this region is the fact that many of the of Palestinians are bombed, that there's warfare between Palestine and Israel. That is the disaster relief that we are funding. And so the best option here is to um, decrease is to cease the um, is to decrease the military aid uh, aid um, significantly at first and then gradually over a long period of time in order for um, in, in order to solve the problem at its root instead of um, pushing instead of trying to put a band-aid on a gunshot wound. Um, finally, you said, uh, you talked about diseases um, in the region. Um, yes, uh, mosquito-borne diseases are terrible, and, it, and but the uh, important thing to realize is that it's not like Israel won't have planes. They will, um, are the whole point of us being, is we are 20% of the budget, of their defense budget, which is significant. Um, but 80% of the budget, it, or, or approximately 20%, of 80% of, of the budget is from Israel itself. Therefore, they have enough money to, for planes and for uh, devices that, and, and for um, uh, machinery and devices that can be used for uh, uh, getting rid of diseases and uh, pushing off the and uh, pushing off mosquito-borne illnesses in the area. Um, so if we gradually, if, and if we gradually reduce them, that allows them to become a self-sustaining, a more self-sustaining nation, and provide for their own, uh, and provide uh, their own uh, planes and and, uh, and ways to uh, defend themselves against these mosquito-borne illnesses. On to uh, our case. Um, you were talking about how. Uh, of warfare, and you said that it wouldn't work because of warfare and mosquitoes. I believe I addressed both of those in the earlier on, um, because of our, our the how we laid it out wouldn't work. Um, you are talking about how uh, we were the UN rules that these uh, settlements that Netanyahu has put up are illegal, um, and this was ruled by the UN. And you said sometimes someone's got to do what they got to do. But if you don't focus, but if we don't follow the rules of the UN, then we do lead to nuclear war, because it rule it ruins the uh, pacts that we have among all of the countries in the UN, and it ruins the ability for um, us to keep a country responsible and prevent uh, warfare and nuclear war from happening. Furthermore, you're talking about all of these war uh, once like, and going back to if we take out this military aid, then we address the root of the problem. Therefore, people won't be losing lives, and uh, we wouldn't need those illegal settlements of the fir in the first place. Um, um, and um, going back to our points of uh, dehumanization uh, for Palestinians, um, and the fact that many of them are dying in this war, uh, are dying in the war, and, uh, and dying um, in much greater numbers than Israelis. I would like to repeat that statistic: that in between the years 2000 and 2014, 6,815 Palestinians were killed, compared to 75 Israelis. That is, and uh, that indicates that the fight is completely unfair. It's completely. Uh, um, Terrible for one side of this, and it is uh, completely dehumanizing. Um, yes. I'm sorry. Uh, when were the 6,800 Palestinians killed? Between the years of 2000 to 2014. Okay. Thank um, you. And we would, and I would also like to point out that that is just a s small number of years. It's been this conflict has been going on since World War since World War Two. This 
is not uh, something that, this is not a small number of people, and the amount of aid that we get to um, Israel is significant, $127 billion in the last, from 1949 to uh, 2015. Um, add on top of, so that is about $3 billion a year that we're giving to aid. It's more aid than we give to any other country in the world. So we'd like to say that right now, that if we need to, at this moment in time, take out half of the funding that we give to Israel, this will force Netanyahu's hand to negotiations, and it will begin to decrease the, um, Israel's ability to wreak havoc on Palestine. Um, it will be, decrease their ability to uh, wreak havoc in the world at large. And it will uh, get them to re get rid of these illegal settlements, which will help save the UN and uh, save the legitimacy of the UN and prevent the entire world from going into a nuclear war. Um, uh, Israel will become self-sustaining. This means that, is, that uh, the US it recognizes uh, Israel as a, for, as a government right now. This means that but if we are giving them billions of dollars in aid every year, then how can we claim that they are a legitimate state? How can we claim that they are a legitimate country if they rely so heavily on the United States? Um, finally, dehumanization. Uh, Palestinians are dying every day, and it is terrible. You will look on Facebook, you look on Twitter, anywhere, you can see the um, devastation that is Israel is wrecking every day, every year. No side is completely innocent in this, but, Israeli, but because of the aid that United States, the military aid that the United States gives them every day, it is, um, uh, the Israel's ha Israelis have a much greater, um, have the upper hand in this conflict and are wrecking havoc that is um, terrible for the Palestinians and increases dehumanization in the world much more. Because of these reasons and many more, please vote for the negative, or for the affirmative, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh,
They also say, in response to our impact two of disadvantage two, about the, um, the claims for uh, prevention of mosquito-borne illness, um, they say that they actually have the money to pay for that. Um, they don't need our help. Only if we take away our aid, then um, they won't be able to spend their money on planes because they'll be too busy spending more money on their own military defense to prevent or at least try to save themselves in the inevitable war that will happen with the surrounding regions. Um, so now I'll go back. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries. Um, is you said like, well, what? How much are you thinking of getting? Would you be getting rid of some of the? Uh, would you be reducing the aid um, that the U.S. gives Israel, or is it staying the same and so you can keep keep the status quo? Um, we didn't have any plan for changing the amount of uh, aid that we gave them. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was going to go back on case with their advantages. Um, Giving less aid uh, would save lives because there's no military stuff going on. Only, um, well, it would because even if we weren't giving military aid, they'd still be involved in military action. They'd still be surrounded by, um, you know, potential war in this region um, because of the lack of aid. Um, and she also talks about about you know approximately 6,800 Palestinians dying between 2000 and 2014. Only. If we were to um, if we were to cease our foreign aid, we stated directly in our uh, disadvantage one and our impacts that 10% of 82 million people would die, potentially 50% of 82 million. That's a lot more than 6,800 people. Um, so it's just as far as impact calculus goes, ours is like is on a bigger ma a scale of magnitude. Um, so yeah, I really don't see how you can compare 6,800 in a span of 14 years to millions of people and potentially only the following few years after decreasing or ceasing aid in Israel. Um, and finally, they talk about Israel becoming self-sufficient only, um, and they say, you know, how can they be considered their own country if the U.S. is, you know, helping them so much and, and doing all this for them? But honestly, they have a long way to go to achieve self-sufficiency. Um, even without our help, uh, it would probably take a lot longer than five years, especially. That's a pretty short time to all of a sudden do everything yourself. You know, don't need help from anyone. You're perfectly a self-sufficient country. So, um, Destabilization. Um, like I said earlier, uh, the nation of Israel does act as a stabilizing force in the Middle East, uh, and that is because of you know they have the help that they get from the U.S. And if we just take this away, our you know, like what we said, it will it will go down the drain. It, it's going to turn into you know basically a hellhole in the Middle East, and there's really going to be nothing else uh, that there's going to be able to do. There's going to be nuclear warfare. There's going to be death. Uh, which could ultimately lead to, uh, you know, 
the loss of humans because of basically what's going to turn into is like a miniature world war, which will lead to bigger things because of the countries that are involved. Um, okay, now, um, okay, so they also said, uh, I'm going to go on case here. Uh, so their plan was, they, they said that, um, um, well actually this is, this is uh, off case actually at our disadvantage. They said that we, they spend all their money you know, bombing Palestine. Well, here's the thing, if their plan does pull through and we, they do somehow self-sustain when we pull out, they're going to do the same exact thing, just go back to bombing Palestine. I mean, uh, you know, that, so that, that basically takes out that. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to move on back on to my disadvantage two, which are disadvantage one, or sorry about that, yes, disadvantage two, which is disaster relief. Um, so Israel, you know, provides the humanitarian and disaster aid to the region. Um, and, you know, once again, the mechanism to providing this aid is the United States of America. Um, without the United States of America, obviously, um, the state of Israel and the whole region would be in big trouble. We're talking nuclear warfare. We're talking death. Uh, massive amounts of it as well. Um, and uh, once again, uh, more people are going to die because of all of this. Uh, and like we said, like my partner said, um, you know, with the disease vectors, if they will still have money, they will still have their own planes to fight uh, against mosquito-borne illness, it's just not going to work out because they won't have the money. They'll have to put their money towards other things. And mosquito-borne illness probably will not be their first choice. Um, okay. And um, overall, uh, the impact calculus is in our favor. Uh, we think that our, the impacts that we gave will definitely make a bigger change in this world as we know it, a uh, beautiful world, you know, a beautiful world as, as we know it. And uh, overall, like I said, our impacts are systemic. And it's not a matter of if it happens, it's a matter of when it happens. And yeah, it's, it's basically the magnitude of so many millions of people dying. Yeah, there's a few uh, Palestinians dying here and there. We're talking the whole region. We're talking everybody in that area will sometime probably end up dying because of nuclear warfare uh, and all the radiation that leads to cancer and death. And like my partner said, they'll end up you know, dying in a slow, painful, most inhumane way possible, all because of you know, a certain change that shouldn't happen. Um, so with the rest of that being said, I state my, or I, I cede my three seconds. Uh, thank you.
like their their argument is that there's still some room. Stop your timers. What's that? We discussed in our previous speech the well, following part of the UN, the Duke Global Use Stabilization. Okay. Okay. Well, just you said that we said. Oh no, we were talking about when. When you said that the region would destabilize, we said the world's going to destabilize. Okay. Okay, so uh, they said that they are still surrounded by enemies, and if we take away aid, they won't be able to defend themselves from enemies. However, their actions right now um, in creating illegal settlements are creating the enemies, and by taking away money and military aid, we're forcing them um, to stop their actions, and they're making a choice of creating these enemies, and they, we can, this will prevent them from creating the enemies and prevent uh, the issues. Um, going on, please. Um, okay, um, so, um, uh, so right now the Prime Minister Netanyahu is creating illegal settlements outside of the UN agreement and by creating these illegal settlements, he is uh, delegitimizing the UN and the UN decisions, which is causing an impact on a global scale, um, which is causing more lives loss and more harm um, than just destabilization on a, a regional scale. From 2000 to 2014, 6,815 Palestinians have died versus 75 Israelis. Um, also, if they lose monetary aid, they might not spend as much money on Palestine because uh, they'll have other places that they could choose to put the money that they have from me. Um, and then by taking away our money, we're forcing Netanyahu to the table because he's cutting his military budget. Um, but we're also not shocking the region by phasing part of the money out over a period of time. So it prevents a total collapse of the Israeli government. Um, we're forcing this Israeli government to become self-sustaining, um, and by doing so, uh, we're forcing them to be uh, legitimized on a global scale versus uh, just uh, us recognizing. Um, uh, we're also do uh, there's also dehumanization in the region because Palestinians are dying in much greater numbers than the Israelis, and they're not receiving aid. Um, only Israel's receiving aid, and they're not having as many uh, deaths and as many issues um, on a human level. Instead, Palestine is not receiving any aid, and they're having much more, um, much more people are dying and being displaced because of it. Um, and that Netanyahu is just pushing on and building these settlements uh, and causing more uh, destabilization and more. Um, and more issues in the region than peaceful and causing. And right now, the status quo is not beneficial to the region because the conflict has been ongoing for over 50 years. Um, and in, uh, obviously, the current solution and the current way of doing things is not actually, is not causing uh, any stabilization in the region. It's just destabilizing the region anymore. Um, uh, I can see the last 10 seconds, but this was me vote affirm. Okay.